It's the new version of the System Shock remake demo. So, we got System Shock, we got System Shock Enhanced Edition, we got System Shock the remake, and then the new version, and then the new new version. I think that might be one too many versions, okay. but this is, from my understanding, an updated version of the medical deck demo that came out a couple months ago, which and I played and I really liked. Of course, this is on a different engine now, right? They had to mm. uh, rebuild no. all the assets, no? Okay. No. So they started remaking the game and they were like, if I'm remembering correctly, which I might not be, I might be adding a step here, they were going to remake System Shock 1, and they were like, we're going to remake it one-to-one -one in Unity, and, you know, cool cool stuff, we're just going to remake the game from the ground up, uh, exactly as you remember. And then at some point they were like, actually, we decided that we're going to put a new spin on things, a reimagining of it, and try to expand certain things and make things a little little more modern overall as far as design goes, and we're going to add some features, and people were like, uh... So they did that for a while, and then, for various reasons, they were like, actually, we decided that we're just going to remake it from the ground up, one-to-one, -one, exactly like the old game, for real this time. Also, we're switching to Unreal Engine, so we've thrown out all of our work, but at least we still have the models. But the problem is those models are like three years out of date now, so... Uh, anyway... <laughs> it is a development that is troubled, but at the same time, they have persevered, and here we are now. Yeah, a rocky start, but I think, especially after playing the first demo, uh, it seems like things are going pretty well now. So, uh, I I like System Shock 1 a hell of a lot. It's gr it's a great game. It's a very good game. And I only um, played it for the first time in like 2017, so that is not nostalgia talking. Uh, you played it before the Enhanced Edition even came out. So, you so were... I played it, I played it like kind of a half enhanced edition it was mm. the night dive re-release so mm -hmm. it did have uh the the fan mouse patch already mm -hmm. applied to it and it ran slightly above its native original resolution but yeah if you get it now you have it like 4k i think it goes up to mm -hmm. because why the fuck not let's get wizardry in here. let's get in here yeah uh, just like the original, this has four different selections for difficulty. But it only has three tiers for each now, simplifying things in a good way, I would say. Yeah. Um, so mission difficulty is going to be, if you max it out, it's going to be your time limited, but it looks like it's locked at one. Uh, it does demo. seem to be locked at one. Mm -hmm. I can change these. <laughs> if you die in the game, you die in real life. That is not a joke. Um, <laughs> so this means, I do know this, they have added the cyberspace sections to this demo. Oh, excellent. And on the hardest difficulty, if you fail a cyberspace section, you lose. Like, it <laughs> fries your brain and you <laughs> die. That's great. Uh, very, very on brand for, like, the, the universe that is presented. Yeah. Now, there is an argument, especially if you're playing the original game, to turn cyber difficulty all the way down because those sections suck. Yes. <laughs> but we'll we'll do what they want. We'll do what they want. Um, combat in the first demo was a little rough. Um, I'm going to leave it at two, but mm -hmm. we'll see. You're going to have to get enemies. your hands on... Uh... A phaser as quickly as possible. Yeah, the the thing is, like, you need to find the spark beam as soon as possible, and mm -hmm. I think they moved it from where it was in the original game. I think you find it a little <laughs> later. The year is twenty seventy two. You are a hacker caught attempting to access projected 
protected files concerning Citadel Station, a space station owned by the Trioptimum Corporation. Edward Diego, a Trioptimum executive, offers to drop all charges against you in exchange for hacking and removing the ethical constraints of Shodan, the artificial intelligence that controls the station. He also promises you a valuable military-grade neural implant. Your implant surgery has been successful, and you've been put into a six-month healing coma. I hope they remake the original cutscene. Yeah. Because it is flashy as all hell. It's almost like a, uh, like, demo scene, sort of, like... Yeah, it does have a demo scene, mm -hmm. uh, kind of vibe to it. Especially with that music. It's yeah. great. Also, it starts in New Atlanta. Remember in, like, the late 80s to <laughs> early 90s when Atlanta was gonna be the next big city? <laughs> Look at that CPU uh, speed. Yes, mother, I hear you. Yes, mother, I hear you. Okay. So well, just here gonna, we are. You can do a little crossfade real quick. All right, I while think I that should do it as far as. Uh, settings goes. So yeah, <laughs> neurosurgery division. Uh, that's my favorite track on the Doom soundtrack. <laughs> so, you can kind of hear it. Mm -hmm. Computer talking. Uh, I don't want to just putz around too much, but let's pick some stuff up. Oh, a mug. Right mouse button to pick up the med patch. So, a little more like System Shock 2 with all your random bits and bobs you can pick up. Mm -hmm. uh, System Shock 1 let you move this stuff around, but I don't, you couldn't, like, take it. There were certain things you could pick up, but yeah. Yeah, like I just picked up a thermometer. I don't actually need this. Oh, this thermometer features a digital LCD screen and is made of... Oh, why did I start reading this? Acrylonawi, you know what? Someone far more attuned to medical stuff. If you, uh, yeah. Yeah, cool. <laughs> I'm not smart enough to read that. I'm pretty sure that's a fictional material anyway. I'm not even I'm not even gonna pretend I know the answer to that one. <laughs> uh is this a oh this is not a not something we can use. So there's it's like an a pipe art. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we use this to give ourselves the power to shoot bees. <laughs> uh interesting take on the graphics. Mm -hmm. It's still like pixelated and, and stuff, and it uses a lot of the same palette as the original, which I really like. I like how it's not shying away from that. But it's still very like high fidelity per pixel lit. <laughs> I think the lighting really actually helps sell the atmosphere because um, they're using the lighting to recreate the colors, but... Oh, there you go. I could do without those little animations. I don't know how necessary they are, and they actually affect your mouse sensitivity. Well, now you got a pipe. Doesn't matter how far you are in the future, technology still can't stand up being bashed with a lead pipe. I mean... Sworn I turned on subtitles. 
I did. You did. Okay, subtitles are not in the game yet. I'm Excellent. not putting subtitles in. I've already <laughs> done enough. <laughs> so I have a question. Yeah. That said live transmission. I don't remember that transmission being live in the original. Oh, it's been a while. Okay. Right. This is something that mm -hmm. I noticed in the original, uh, the first demo. And I, I love that they did it and I hate them for doing it. The mm. sound that certain... Wait, hold on. You hear that? That's the same sound the cameras make in System Shock 2. You don't want to hear that sound. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, security cameras in System Shock 1 don't do anything to you, but... Destroying them, you see level security is now 96%. You want to destroy as many of them as you can find, and ideally all of them, because uh, sh that indicates Shodan's control over the level. Uh, and if you destroy enough, you can unlock certain doors. Oh, there's an animation for this? Yeah. So, of course, there's nothing like nanites. You don't have to pay to use the machines. And, uh... Stay tuned for our thoughts on System Shock 2 at some point in the future. <laughs> you see, you don't have to pay to use the machines because there's, uh... uh healthcare is, uh, is socialized in the first game. Yeah. Using it for gaming is strictly prohibited. Can we, uh... <laughs> We can vaporize it, apparently. We can vaporize it, but I want to know if they actually uh, put in any games. Also, yeah, like this this dinky little Lost in Space style robot, I love that all the enemy designs we've seen so far are exactly the same. They, they did not try to make anything cooler. Good. It was already cool enough. So that's, it gives you the tutorial, but now it's like, that's why you want to do it. Also, yep, that sound literally still gives me heart palpitations. <laughs> <sighs> Hate that they did it, love that they did it. Hey, look, that's us. I wish I could look that cool. Sort of. I, I think this is, I don't know, it might be us. Oh, look at that, like, cool little reflection. reflection. Okay. What do you think? Well, there's only one correct card. That's a face. No, we to don't self. know how long that body's been there. Just in case I wake up and I overhear the security squad is on their way, the door code to exit the surgery. <laughs> what if I remembered how to talk? Door code to the surgery suite is 451. Or you could just bash it. <laughs> no. <laughs> hello. Oh, hello there. Oh, they gave them drool. That's gross. They're gross. Oh, I don't melee, like them. Uh, melee seems a little better than it was in the, the demo before. Uh, that guy seemed to, like, stagger when I hit him. Yes, he was highly responsive to being... Can we not examine his ass, please? <laughs> what, this ass? Not... You don't want to look at this ass right here? Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <sighs> hey, Shodan. Welcome back to Citadel Station. We hope your somnolent healing stage went well. Today is the sixth day of November, year 2072. Y you are currently in the healing suites, located on the first level. 
Level 2 contains the research laboratories. 3 houses the Department of Maintenance. And the storage cells are on level 4. The flight deck is on level 5. Le le level 6 holds crew facilities and executive suites. And level 7 is system engineering. Level 8 houses the Department of Security. The bridge is located on level 9 and energy systems on level R. All levels can be accessed by the elevator in, in, in Alpha Quadrant. We hope you have a pleasant stay on Citadel Station. Thanks, Shodan. She seems like a good lass. Seems like she's got things sorted. Um, I appreciate that it still tells you what you're looking at when you look at things. Yeah, it's really cool. So, um... <laughs> oh, God. So, hacking in System Shock 1 original was a weird mix of things. You had to, like, match wires up. Um, this is now just Bioshock Pipe Dream. In all the possible hacking minigames, I don't mind this. I would rather this than... Uh, System Shock 2's you can just soft lock yourself by running out of money. Um, <laughs> uh, ultimately, ultimately it doesn't matter. I was freaking out because they just give you a pistol? Excellent. Also, hell yeah, the Aliens style, Unreal Tournament style weapon ammo counter. Good. Always good to see. You really uh, got two shots. Yeah. More than enough to kill anything that moves. So, I want to ask, because I haven't played the older demo or this demo myself, do you have all the various crouching and leaning state of the original? So, you can crouch and lean. I don't think there is a prone. Okay. Um... Yeah, I'll, I'll actually link it in the, the corner, up near my health bar there. Look at the, the card. Uh, the Danson series of videos that I made when I first experienced System Shock 1 and discovered the stance indicator. Uh, this is a new addition. They, they have added a couple new things. It's not like a perfect one-to-one -one only. So you can mm. see like these weird medical mutant droid people things uh doing doing things to these poor souls i see medical scissors right see i i can't hate to say this but i wish i kind of hope they change the asset for this because it looks like a patch <laughs> I appreciate that they're adding things that are just happening around the station because um, as good as the original game is the station can feel a bit lifeless at times So you're saying I have to cut off their limbs? Well, I don't know. No one's written it on a wall yet, so we don't know for sure that that's what needs to happen. <laughs> this is a very faithful recreation of the layout of the it, station. It is. I wonder... One. Yeah, here we go. You can bring up your map. Um, oh, they, yeah, you can add markers now? Excellent. Oh, can't... Okay, and that's a shame. Unless I'm just doing it wrong, it doesn't seem like you can add notes to the markers, but, 
hopefully that'll be in the final product. It's kind of important to yeah. this game. Yeah. Although it does... It does uh, generally auto-add things that you you type on the map yourself anyway, so... Fair enough. So you're telling me I don't have to add an elevator marker to every floor? <laughs> no. Okay, I'll be honest, there's a little too much bloom, and I can't yeah. really tell what my objective here is. Just, uh, oh, okay, there's an indent. Okay. Do stuff until the bloom is everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Oh god, it hurts my eyes. <laughs> this is a little rough night dive, I'm not gonna lie. We have to get it up there, I imagine. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. I. It being here right next to there, I was mm -hmm. like, oh, it's just another thing. No, okay. I, I get it now. Okay. We're good. Hooray! Pipe dream. You're a hacking whiz. Oh hell yeah, this elevator. Yeah. Human corpse. It leads to this one little box. You get a stamina stimulant. Oh! Okay, that's new. <laughs> Why do they shoot fire? Do you know uh, how dangerous that is on a space station? Oh god, and it has laser claws? That's terrifying. I wonder if radiation will still be, like, ear exploding. Oh, I really hope not. <laughs> well, let's pull the lever. Hey, look, we turned the lights on. That's good. Maybe. With all this lighting, I'm surprised there isn't a ray tracing option. I imagine there will be at some point in the future. Mm. Oh, there's our boy. They're so gross looking. <laughs> there's like a weird... No. Oh, there's a weird shroud around their head or something. <laughs> mm. I think it's meant to be hair. Maybe it goes away though. They're like mm. drooling when they're they're walking towards you. These animations are a little too long. Not gonna lie. Yeah, that needs to be sped up for sure. Oh, the heads pop. Okay, cool. That's what- that's the power of drugs, baby. Yeah. I like that they still kept the weird... the vision fucking up. Yeah. So, the thing about System Shock 1 is that... oh, second stage of it. Mm. Oh, those are the ghost? original sprites! Oh! Oh, that's really cool. Oh god, I YouTube like compression is gonna hate this. Oh, yes. My condolences, everybody. Hey, look. They're probably gonna want to put a photosensitive seizure warning. I, uh, yeah. It, it, you'll... You'll have seen one at the beginning of this video. Oh, okay, there we go. Oh, damaged spark beam. Those bastards. <laughs> Broken Is beyond it still repair. Usable? No. Aww. See, that's what I was gonna say. Um, yeah. System Shock One is interesting because while it is absolutely the progenitor of like the immersive sim genre, uh, you could make arguments for Ultima Underworld, but it was much more focused here. It didn't actually have a crafting or skill system at all. Hmm. 
Um, also, look at these shadows. See how they're moving? Oh, cool! Uh, Citadel Station orbits Saturn in real time. This I like. And it rotates this... on its own. So if we if we stand here and wait, we will eventually see Saturn come across the windows. That's really cool. That is a nice touch. That's the kind of thing we should be using new technology and like horsepower computationally for, right? Yeah. That I mean it's like um Talos mm. one in Prey. Yeah. The new Prey. Oh, the new Prey is so good. Hey, if you heard about the the Prey, the new Prey by Arcane, and you were like, oh, but I wanted Prey too. Or, no, go play it. It's actually a really cool spiritual successor to System Shock. <laughs> yeah. And you'll notice we've actually picked up the Group 1 access card a couple times. Which is uh, good, because you are not required to go everywhere. Remember, our... Hmm... Our, uh, goal right now is to find the mining laser and yeah. turn it off. So the cool Groves. thing ab about the original System Shock, yeah, let's, the less we say about the groves, the better. Um, <laughs> the thing about the original System Shock is that it, like, there are video games with branching paths in terms of like physical locations you can go to um system shock one was like hey here's a space station how you get to like the place you need to go you figure it out you could absolutely find an access card to the area you need to go multiple times because like there was no one place to get it yeah and well i mean you're not the boss of me wall <laughs> System Shock 2 had a lot of that as well. Mm. Oh, resist. Um, yeah, System Shock 1, I... Again, I don't want to get too much into System Shock mm. 2 right now, but I do honestly think I like System Shock 1 more than 2. Well, in um, System Shock 1, you're expected to miss areas, right? Yeah. Like, entirely. Yeah, System Shock 1 is... It's not as directed... And the thing, I love the writing in System Shock 1. It is... It's amazing. It really is. People remember Shodan very fondly because she is one of the most effective villains ever written for video games. She always has a plan. And you stopping one thing is like, well, okay, I'm going to redouble my efforts on this other one then. Well, System Shock 1 did a lot better of a job um, portraying Shodan as this, like, god machine villain that it's like it doesn't really matter if you even inconvenience her mildly because she's already been working on 10 other plans while you've been foiling one yeah i mean these groves people who've played mm. system shock one and two know what the <laughs> groves mean but you know this yeah. is just the demo we won't see them yet mm -hmm. uh yeah there there's a lot going on and... I appreciate that Gamma's already jettisoned, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's pick up this audio log. Yeah. So, it's System Shock 1 was yeah. the first game to have audio logs, and yes. these are, in this demo, uh, largely the same as the content from the original. Uh, and... oh, goodbye. I will say the voice actors are, um... It's not like they weren't trying in the original, but the voice actors are certainly putting in much more of an effort to sell the emotion of the situation than the original. Yeah, the original um, was obviously just, like, people in the office. 
And that's not Which, that's not a bad thing. No, it's to its benefit in a lot of audio logs because it's like these people are bored engineers who are like put upon, and they you get that feeling. Ooh, a toilet. Here's another but, addition uh, to the to yeah. remake. <laughs> they definitely feel a lot more like um people in a stressful situation in these audio logs. Oh, shit. Which I can, oh god, it's him. Yeah. <laughs> Were you sizzling after he hit you? Uh -huh. Oh my god! <laughs> let's let's heal up a little bit now. You might be asking, couldn't we just go back to medical and get a full heal that way? Yes. Yes, we could. This is an immersive sim. You can do what you want. Of course, in this game, there's a whole animation for it. Was it whereas in the old game, you just press a button and psh, you're healed. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, there's definitely a little more process involved here. To discourage, I suppose. Hello, Kirby Lawton. Getting supplies from the West Wing of Medical Costas. Hansen and Reigns. At this rate, we're dead in hours rather than days. Weeks of loss after loss is taking its toll. We're going to rush the access corridor that leads to the bridge and take down Shodan. If we don't, then I'll make sure there isn't enough of me left to be used to spare parts. That's an ominous statement. Yeah. So System Shock 1 was the first game to use audio logs, and in a lot of cases it's one of the best games to use audio logs. Because um, you mentioned mm -hmm. you know, board engineers, and not just for sounding weird, but um... Mm -hmm. Because the things they talk about are very run-of-the-mill. Like, there, it's like, we're about to mount an assault. But that other one was just like, I am sad that people are dying. Yeah. It, it's... It's a lot different than things you get even now. I do appreciate that they have translated that sense of exhaustion that everyone has. Because, like... Um... Like he said, they've been on this station dealing with Shodan attacking them for weeks. Right? Um, and in oh, the, shit. Oh, no. <laughs> you want to leave very quickly. <laughs> okay, video game. I think I know how to reload. What is wrong with him? Um, either this is an intentional effect that's very unsettling, or it's a weird <laughs> animation glitch. Uh, either way, it's effective. So, you saw uh, mm. R to reload, T to switch ammo types. I don't have any additional ammo types right now, but uh, System Shock 1, much like 2, if you've not, uh, if you've only played that one, has multiple ammo types you can load per weapon that uh, affects what it's good at hurting. Which is uh, why you want to get your hands on a certain specific weapon <laughs> as yeah. fast as you can. Right now, we just have standard rounds. This is a damage type over your kinetic. Mm -hmm. um, I don't... This mini pistol is new for the remake. Uh, I don't know what kind of ammo it's going to have available overall. I, I imagine, uh, though, it'll retain the sort of, like, kinetic ammunition for its fleshy things, and then... Energy yeah, ammunition there's... for anything made of metal. And it, yeah, System Shock 1 didn't just have, like, see, this is a stethoscope, not yeah. a not a patch. Oh, hey, it's a, it's a Shodan panel. You better yeah. break that. Well, nothing to do with oh, it. Oh, you can't? Um, yeah, you had the, you had your usual, like, kinetic, armor piercing, mm. uh, stuff like that. You know, shotgun, I don't know, I don't remember if there was a shotgun, actually, am I? How embarrassing. Oh, here we go. Spark beam. Press T to change, change the beam intensity. I love this weapon. I love it. It is so <laughs> cool and inventive. Because... One of the best weapons in the original game, too. Yeah. Yeah, that seems safe. <laughs> it's fine. In the original game, this was, con this was controlled by a slider in one of your mm. side panels. But yeah, it has high, medium, and low settings. And 
let's say you just want to shoot a camera from across the room. Well, use the low setting. Deal damage to an enemy? Medium. Deal a lot of damage to an enemy? High. Oh, why wouldn't you always use the high setting? Because, you see the bar under my health bar with a blue lightning bolt? That takes... That, that's my energy. And energy weapons take energy. And energy is quite hard to find in this game. <laughs> uh, at least right now. We're gonna be yeah. able to... There's always a point on any given uh, floor of the station where it's gonna be really easy to top yourself up. Or, you know, die and come back with no real penalty. <laughs> but... Uh, ultimately... Until you get to that point, it's a little rough. Oh. And that's going to be a, a per floor thing, right? Yeah. Like, you, you have to do that uphill battle with each new floor you come to, which oh, is really yeah. great. Oh, hey, it's these, uh... What was that? I don't want to say zero gravity, but they're like gravity oh. tunnels. Every time. Every fucking <laughs> Every time. So, like, here, I don't... Oh, this is in the middle of a thing. There we go. Well, on now. This is a uh, different mm -hmm. kind of hacking. This is actually more like the uh, the original. It's similar mm -hmm. in a lot of ways. So let's see what happens when we do that. I like uh, the very tactile feeling they're giving it. Hmm, I think you need green or... Yeah, so that's what that yeah. is. That's the color it's looking for indicator. So, let's... Yeah, that should do it. That's really cool. I like that. Yeah. And this creates a uh, light bridge. Oh, that is a much more definite light bridge than in the original. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like just a 50% opacity red plane? <laughs> but uh, we did that. Let's actually... Yeah. Let's hop down here. So these little grav lifts were, in fact, in the original game. They did reuse them in System Shock 2. Ah, radiation poisoning. Mm. So let's not go down there. <laughs> Radiation poisoning will absolutely get you in oh, System yeah. Shock 1. Oh, yeah. Hey, look, more bullets. So here's a fun thing they did add. Tri-pop soda. Uh, <laughs> this is... They backported this from System Shock 2. You can you can get sodas. Hold. Okay, but what flavor is it? Uh, this is tri-orange. We also currently have access to Callisto Purple. Citadel Mist and Hyperion Red. <laughs> I love it. And you can see they actually have different sugar and calorie values. <laughs> That's great. So, oh, this one's, you know, 50, 59 grams of sugar. This one's only 51. 85 calories for that one? 86? You know, this is... I actually have a can of real-world soda next to me right now, and it's, uh, 150 calories, so... Soda in the future is gonna be pretty healthy. There are... There are much more stringent standards on food they give to people. Eh? Well, considering it has high fructose corn syrup and sugar in it... <laughs> genetically modified food starch. Now, let's, let's compare this with, uh, actual actual soda. So, in the game, uh, Tri-Pop Soda Tri-Orange has carbonated water, high fructose corn syrup, sugar, artificial flavors, ammonium sulfate, citric acid, phosphoric acid, genetically modified food starch, sodium benzoate, potassium benzoate, guarana, 
uh, cetacea extract, niacinamide, inositol, I don't know what that is, riboflavin, and caffeine. Uh, unnamed soda, so nobody can get mad at me. Carbonated water, high fructose corn syrup, caramel color, phosphoric acid, natural and artificial flavors, sodium benzoate, caffeine. So, uh... There's a few more things in there, but... Uh, a few I don't more know things, but it's still half the calories. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was that little aside. I, I appreciate they have Imperial and Metric as well on the measurements. Yeah. So we don't want to go down there. It's yet, pretty radioactive. Anyway. Oh, I love the way they've made these corridors look, man. Yeah, it... It's just as boxy as the original. Like, the map is almost identical. Once we explore more of this level, we'll see. But that's to its benefit. The OG System Shock had graphics that I would freely describe as primitive in terms of the way they are constructed. But, oh, absolutely. Um, they, they did a very good job of creating a space station that feels like a place where they just didn't want to waste any space when they built it. Yeah, System Shock 1's maps are very efficient. Whereas in System Shock 2, uh, it's everything is very spacious and luxurious, comparatively. Yeah, I'd say System Shock 2 still manages to f uh, to go for a a fairly realistic seeming mm. environment, but there it's it's nothing like uh, excellent uh, the cramped confines of like these back corridors. David Honing again. So yeah, there, there's definitely a little more room in these audio logs for a real story to come through versus just like, there is a scary monster. I think it came from the cyber bay. Well, unlike um, later games in the genre that use audio logs as a way to give the player exposition and information, um, System Shock 1 being the first real immersive sim, right? Uh, does a very excellent job of the audio logs you're finding feeling like um, the people on the station are chronicling, chronicling these things because they know there's no hope. Like, they are making these recordings because they know they're all going to die and they want someone to know something about what happened on the station. Yeah, or even sometimes you, you can make an argument for just, like, the simple act of human conversation. Yes, like they, they feel also. a need to talk because all they're hearing is much worse. Yeah. <laughs> the, the first System Shock, they came out of the gate with such a, like, grim and oppressive video game. Oh, shit. Oh, they no. Now? They explode and kill you now. Oh, no. <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> A problem has been detected. <laughs> oh, God. Um, I didn't save it all. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. Game over. I, I wondered what that noise was. <laughs> all right. 
I'll, I'll bring us back. Oh. Alright, so as you can see, we're back to where we <laughs> were. The shit? Ah! How'd you get there? <laughs> They're very stealthy, these kill bots. They are! Dead cyborg assassin. I mean, they don't call them assassins because they're lumbering and loud. Yeah. See, so yeah, we um ran into some interesting stuff. <laughs> That's a curious way to say I got blown up by a self-destructing cyborg. It is. And I heard a noise earlier. Like there was a bomb of some kind. Maybe they just threw a grenade at me, is all. Maybe. Is all. <sighs> oh, ladder animation. Okay. So, uh, the original system shock has a rather curious. That seems deliberate. It uh, I has think a so, rather yeah. curious development history. Uh, Looking Glass Studios are obviously pretty unique. Yeah, but, rest um, in peace. System Shock had a, a unique distinction in that um, many of the members who worked on it were from a band called Tribe, and they not only worked on like the game itself, level design, writing, that sort of thing, but they did all the audio design for it. He did throw a grenade at me. He did. Or it's the land one. Oh god, it might be. You know what? I looked <laughs> up what the quick save button was. <laughs> there you go. Oh, we can go further down. Excellent. So yeah, um, the audio design in System Shock 1 was handled by people who were musicians. Uh, so, you, you know, there's the, um, obviously the audio logs were done by various people in the offices, but it, it had a, a higher quality of audio design and mastering and mixing than other games at the time. Uh, specifically the CD enhanced version of System Shock here. Right. Yes. Because uh, Shrodan wasn't voice acted unless you had the CD enhanced version. Right. Because otherwise the game came on a bunch of floppies, which could not hold voice data. No, they could not. I think it must be up there. This is an interesting situation to find yourself in. It is. What? It was down there, apparently. Maybe. All right. All right. <laughs> that guy's a dick. Have you got grenades? I have gas grenades, which don't do anything to cyborgs because they don't breathe air. Yeah. So um, it's an. Maybe you can throw an object. Maybe. But yeah, it's an interesting distinction that they had musicians working on the original System Shock. Shodan um, was voiced by uh, Terry Brosius, who was uh, who did the keyboard and some of the backup vocals in the band Tribe. Um, Terry Brosius is really someone that uh, people should talk about more because um, these days I see a lot of people talk about female representation, not just within video games themselves, but within the industry. I used my med. Um, Oh. I used my trouble. med kit and then pressed the wrong button, so... Great. Good work. So when it comes to representation within the industry, let's go back to uh, Terry Brosius, who... You alright there? I still took three points of damage. Yeah, it's better than dying. Yeah. Um, she... So she was most notably too many. Ah. Uh, Look at this. Oh, these things. force field doors. Yeah. So she was the voice of Shodan, and still is, by the way, I want to say. They brought her back for this. Um, yep. She uh, 
is actually a little more important than most people realize because she was um, a writer <gasps> for Thief. You all right there? Uh. Oh, it's 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 the turret. Good luck to you. You know Set what? Set it on the high setting, yeah. There we go. But you, you see how much it took out of my yeah my battery there. But it did the job. Um, it surely did. Miss Brosius was the I hope I'm pronouncing her last name correctly. Was uh, a writer for Thief Thief Two. Um, she was a writer for Dishonored. Um, <laughs> she did level design for Thief Two. Hmm. Um, and Thief the uh. Deadly Shadows was uh, one of her, like, she had a lot of involvement with that. Um, Interesting. She has actually been uh, under the radar super influential on some of the most, like, well-beloved games to ever be made. Yeah, I, I don't think it's actually intentional, mm. considering all enemies seem uh, to have the head bobbing. Oh, uh, well, that, that's a shame, then. Gamma. But, um... She's been there the whole time, man. Being one of the best parts of the video game industry. I mean, her vocal performance as Shodan, coupled with whoever came up with the distortion effects, just fantastic and iconic. I wouldn't for... be surprised. Oh, what is that? I didn't That's expect the them to have those enemies. Back when I played yep. this the first time, there were only uh, a couple enemy oh, types, and this was not one of them. Don't get shot by it. Ooh boy, that looks bad for your health. It does. I think you got him. Okay, I didn't expect the death ray robots <laughs> to be in the game yet. I don't uh, know if the animation is totally necessary. Uh, but check it out, you can walk through enemies. Uh, corpses. Yeah. That's kind of a necessity since these corridors can become quite narrow. Yeah. Man, back yeah, so back when I played the demo for the first time, uh, mm -hmm. they had the trash can robot, the mutant, the naked mutant, and the cyborg guys, and that was it, as far as I remember. There aren't any in this area of the station, but I wonder if the uh, Zero G mutant is ready. Oh god. Broken security camera already. Hey, look. Zero G mutant is, uh, oh hey, mobile laser storage. I guess that's why the death ray was there. I guess so. Uh, so, I believe. Oh, okay. Yeah, look how much of the station or we've mm -hmm. gone through already. Well, part of it that helps is that you know your way around. A little bit, yeah. Those grab lists. Whoa, hi! I didn't expect there to be three of them. Ow. <laughs> we'll get there eventually. Eventually. Okay, cool. <laughs> it's okay. It's only smoldering flesh. That's what the med patches are for. <laughs> He's caught in the gravity field. <laughs> Fuck. Again, every, every single. It's the same noise as in System Shock 2. <laughs> and what that means in System Shock 2 is a fucking turret's gonna pop up and start killing you. Not the case here, they're harmless. You know what? Don't fix this. Don't change this. This is great. Can you drag the bodies at all? 
Uh, I don't know. I mean, I can try. No, it just immediately opens the inventory. Mm -hmm. Look at the little spinny bits for the light bridge being. Didn't notice those at first. To let you know that it's on. Yeah. <laughs> Wait. Wait for it. That's n can't use paneling. Okay. Whee! <laughs> oh, delightful. <laughs> That's good. This is this is what we should be using technology for, people. Absolutely. I remember right, there's assassins down here. Yeah, there's something for sure. Camera activating security door. Ah. Okay, that was weird. <laughs> Not help with a little bit of lag there. Now... Yeah, hi. They're definitely, um... As much as they're being faithful to the original, they're definitely trying to keep you on your toes as a veteran. Which oh, I think yeah. Which is pretty cool. Oh, battery packs. So these will recharge your energy, just like hitting a station will. But obviously they're mobile. One of the best items in the game, those. Excuse me, I had to sneeze. So, getting down there was just for, obviously, the battery packs, but also the uh, level security, because um, I made a note on my way back over here. This is a door that's locked by Shodan level security, this little, this little marker right here. So, level security has to be a certain threshold before that will open. So, it's in your best interest to... Uh, break all the cameras. This might be what I'm thinking of with the assassin droids. I think that speci specific yeah. hallway is a little later. Alright, oh, there's one. Although they seem, um melee focused unlike uh, the original game where they would just yeah, these... like barrage you with plasma <laughs> I know I said I really like the original mm. and I do but I mm. can't remember if these are from them they're definitely the the big arms on the menu um but that red line black get up assassin droid was definitely in system shock one Hey, it's a toilet. Yeah, the toilet. They added, one of those. Yeah. they added these. Thought it was going to be a respawn chamber. Ah, uh, no, no, no. We're not so lucky yet. This is the hallway. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <sighs> My pulse goes up every time I hear it, too, right? for the record. <laughs> Oh, show them. Directive to Cyborg F-71. Move mutagen experiment V-5 to, to, to Beta Grove on the executive level. Let the virus loose in the grove. 
and uh, observe its effects on, on flora and fauna. Collect samples from the mutated. Kill those who have not shown progress. And, and we will soon have a perfected strain that will consume the earth, allowing me to reshape the in insect, the insects in my perfect image. Ah, uh, yeah. Showed in. <laughs> That's another. So she has control over the mining laser, but she's already doing other stuff. She's not content to just have a single plan. Which, you know what? Cool. It's good writing. Oh! You'd think even with the bright glowing numbers I could see how many bullets I have left. <laughs> That's called fog of war. Orange is not the middle color, which I... Ah, here we go. There it is. Cyborg conversion cancelled. Standard station restoration procedures online. And now the game's difficulty has basically plummeted, because if we yes. die, we respawn in this room with no ill effects whatsoever, unless they added some, but... Uh, well, that's because you were intended to play the game with max mission difficulty, and the, the penalty was time lost, right? That's true. That's a good point. A mm. uh, new audio log. We, we got one of the regeneration rooms working again. I, I cut Shodan's connection to the medical CPU, and that allowed us to fix the cyborg override protocol it's installed without having to worry about it reverting. Yeah. So, you know, see, see all the stuff about the, the various plans Shodan has, but her first one, her first action as, you know, freed from the ethical constraints, was to change the medical stations aboard Citadel Station and make them turn people into weird cyborgs and mutants and stuff, and like, she's already done that. That part of her plan has already been completed, and that's how she has such a big force, because before people realized what was happening, you know, they'd get hurt, they'd go into the medical bay, and then they'd come out, you know, robbed of their entire humanity. So I'm going to make one Horrifying. more quick save here, just mm. as uh, protection against the game crashing. But uh, yeah, yes. we have this, we don't have to save scum anymore. Which is good, because yeah. we're about to uh, have some bad things happen to us. So I point. alluded to it, um, they don't actually let you fiddle with the setting in this demo, but in the original game, if you maxed out the mission difficulty, uh, they tell you that she's going to activate, was it 20 minutes or something? Um, uh, they tell you that Shodan's going to activate the mining laser and strike Earth with it. Uh, and the the time that they give you in the dialogue is the amount of time you have to stop her. So specifically, it is actually a global timer. Yes. Uh, across the entire game. Yeah. Um, so and afterwards. The whole time it's just that she's going... To, I forget exactly what she does, but you you lose mm. if the timer runs down. Yes. Um, so, let's, so you have to complete the game within that time. Let's see if these gas grenades do anything to the cyborg. They shouldn't, but I don't know if these guys are, like, not Organic, cyborg yeah. enough. So, we'll... Uh, yeah, yeah, they do. Okay, so these guys are nice. human enough. But, uh, yeah, you had a global timer, 
and if you did not come stop showdown within that time game over so the restoration chambers while they seem like a, a spike downward in difficulty that is because originally you were intended to play the game on max mission difficulty and if you died and went back to the restoration chamber that meant you had to run all the way back to wherever you were and finish what you were doing that's true oh that was our last bullet well you hope you find more real soon so we'll set our spark beam to medium uh-huh no oh, and we'll set it to low they really should just have a number or like a number of pips that increases instead of an esoteric like color setting yeah it, it's also um not terribly large no right it's it's very it's right there at the weird middle area of the gun and it goes from orange to purple to red it shouldn't it just be like green yellow red like a stoplight it should be green yellow red and the pips should be next to each other and like light in addition to each other right to give you an idea of what's happening do you just get that now or no is that this is damaged ah uh, but uh okay the assault rifle has auto destructed, so that's uh, it's going to be one of the weapons we can get later. Mm -hmm. um, and then, I believe, hell yeah, you can still do it. So in System Shock One, there was actually no reload button. You had to physically drag the ammo from your inventory onto the weapon because, like, how we have our little mini map side panel here. Uh, you also had a weapon side panel. Yeah. And you would drag ammo from your inventory onto the weapon side panel to load it. And then, if it was like the spark beam, you'd have a little slider that you could push and pull. And Weapons for ammo. All had their own. Yeah. yeah. For ammo, you had the unload button. So it would unload the ammo into your inventory, and then you would switch ammo types just by loading a different one. And. Again, I first played this game in 2017, so this isn't nostalgia talking. I loved how that changed the dynamic of combat. Because even with mouse control, right, It's it wasn't intended to be played that way, because it was still, like, the era of using keyboards for everything. So it, it was definitely easier with a mouse. But there was still such, like, a process... To managing your like physical objects of your inventory it felt really cool it also put you when you and were you fighting various cyborgs and mutants it also put you in situations where my gun's out of ammo and i have to reload it that is a process that i can't do out in the open while looking at the enemy oh because you it will get are me not welcomed here remove yourself yeah. Mm, she doesn't like you being oh, here. I wonder why. Saw that. <laughs> saw that big boy. Oh god. Yeah. You know what? Oh. Did I get it? I stunned it. That's what happened. Excellent. I <laughs> like how the triop logo.jpg is missing until later. <laughs> uh, so let's see. Looking glass optic nerve V6.17 is our display type. And here we go. So now instead of being converted into a cyborg upon death, the medical station does what it's supposed to do. Yeah. And of course all our progress, you know, we haven't we haven't reloaded anything, we've just respawned. So all our progress is still there. Hello. Oh god, he laid another mine. Well, go disarm it. Do I have <laughs> Uh, by the way, he's, uh, up here with you. I know. It's fine. Okay. 
That didn't work. Sure, it's that thing. <laughs> so, there's actually in the original game, there is a way to move mines around but we don't have that gun yet uh, you could pick up a riot gun that you could load with rubber bullets and rubber bullets didn't do shit to to enemies especially not robotic enemies but <laughs> you could use them to do uh, environmental actions so like you could push mines around with them was was the big one could you hit Which... switches with them i never tried I don't... I don't remember if you could. I hope they've changed it so you can in this if you couldn't in the original. Like, that would be a good add. Oh, it should also be mentioned, of course, when you respawn, you respawn with half health. Well, I mean, the medical stations aren't perfect. Yeah, and uh, look, here's here's Saturn. Hey. And, yeah, like I said, if the Citadel Station rotates in real time, so you can just, you can see it a little bit right now, but you could just sit here and use this game as a screensaver, basically. That's great. We're not going to do that. But no, no, clearly not. That would be a waste of our time. Oh, cool little... Cool little animation on these. They're oxygen scrubbers. Ah, uh, here we go. Fragmentation grenade. <laughs> Excellent. Well, now you got a way to deal with mines, hopefully. Yeah, one could hope. Yeah, just I, I'm very impressed by the work that they're that they've done with this. There's a lot of little cool things everywhere. Set that to medium. All right, so... back that way. Let's see. Where were we going when we died? Right, you! <laughs> okay, we don't have enough battery. This is where these batteries come in handy. Oh shit, another enemy. Okay, well... There we go. 
<laughs> yeah, that guy's definitely more of a problem in this game than he was in the original. Oh, hi. They say things. Oh, look, another one of these rooms. Medical pad. This is a very loud door. This room is loud in general. Yeah. It is. So let's... Ah, the CPU room. Well, you've got CPU cores to bust, right? Yeah, we do. Now, the thing about this game is that yeah you you have your your objective we have to stop the mining laser to do that we have to break the CPU cores um uh oh fun uh we don't have any anti-rad hypos at the moment nope or patches in this game um but yeah like like we were saying earlier like you brought up you can miss a lot of this game very little of, of these areas is actually... Enter the room, insect, and it will become your grave. Yeah. Well, you've been warned. <laughs> so these are the CPU cores. Mm -hmm. So you know what? Let's, uh... Let's come back here in a little bit. Let's take a look at some other stuff, because there's a lot left to see. Oh, don't enter the room, insect. Uh, I didn't yet. There's a lot left that we can we can go look for and at, because look at all this. There's a whole area over here we didn't even go back at the beginning. Did you head back to that secure area that was locked, or not? Uh, not yet. So that's another thing I want to check out. If there's this thing, so... It's that radiation room we don't want to go into. This is where that guy was. Yeah, there's just a lot. And it's all really cool. Like I said, I'm I'm very much a fan of what Night Dive has been doing. Night Dive just seemed to be killing it in general, you know. Oh yeah. We could go down there maybe, but Oh, Isn't that area still highly radioactive? Yup. We don't have a way to deal with it at the moment, so... Uh, let's see if this... Nope. Still needs lower security. Now, breaking the CPU cores will lower the security considerably. Uh, that factors into it. So, it might open up after we break them. But we're just going to backtrack a little bit and see what is in some of the other parts of the station that we just plain didn't go to. Because I kind of stumbled on the correct path. Because, like, we have this area. Okay, this cool little thing here. Uh, this Plants area... Are very important of, uh, part of life living in space. Oh, you absolutely. Uh, the first time I was playing System Shock 1, the, the original, this area had, like, a million mutants in it. And I was <laughs> just stuck running around this pillar, killing things for, like, a good couple of minutes. 
Althea Grossman. Another blow today. Carl reported Keith and his group are, are dead. He and Todd got separated on the way back. Carl watched on a security monitor as Todd was dragged into a region bay only to come out as some cyborg. <laughs> Carl marked the room with the word here before he ran. You know, if we had the override that Kevin had when he vanished, we might have stood a chance, but we don't. We have 20 people left. Supplies are low. If, if we don't push forward, we're dead. Maybe... So that is telling us uh, where to find the regeneration bay a little more clearly than just wandering into it like I did. But yeah, that's it was marked with the word here, written in mysterious red liquid, either paint or blood. And yep, all the way over here. Each floor of the station typically only has one respawn bay. So you are looking... Again, part of part of dying is also it puts you at that specific location. Which, you know, maybe that's uh, far away from where you want to be. And look at where we are. This is new. Oh. Let's, uh... Insert credits to make your selection. Oh, requires coin. Oh, no. Snacktron recommends the... Cracko bite. Warning, maybe semi-addictive. <laughs> <laughs> All these little new features. That's great. Got cocky. Didn't think there'd be a zombie in here. There was. Oh no, my Discord has crashed. Alright, uh, we're gonna crossfade. Uh, well, Shodan got tired of me breaking all her cameras and she hacked my internet connection. But now we're back! Excellent. Well, that's what you get for going into that room, insect. <laughs> I guess so. So, yeah, uh, I think I actually dropped out before you uh, saw this. I love you, Snacktron. <laughs> uh, Snacktron or Value Rep? What do you think? I mean, they're pretty closely tied together, I suppose. Yeah. They're, they're both real strong contenders, no lie. Aren't they? That needs a... I like how many auto icons there are. Like, that needs a door, that needs a... Oh, that's a keypad door, that's a keypad door. <laughs> well, let's, um... Let's see what else we can do here, I guess.
Ah uh, yes, radiation. Oh. Well, that's radiation's pretty bad for you. We don't have enough energy left. It's probably fine, right? We can we can survive a little bit. <laughs> It's for this thing. Cool. Uh, I guess it didn't work out for them. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like things didn't go so great in here. Oh look, here's another spark beam. So yeah, you could get this one as well. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, good ammo. Some grenades. Proximity mines, ooh. Saturn. So yeah, should note, we mentioned it before, but uh, System Shock 1 is a little less of an RPG, so there's no hacking. If you want to get into a door locked by a keypad, you need to find the code. Or an alternate way of opening the door in some cases. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so... Let's go... Let's head back to medical, actually. Stuff in here. Ah, the skull box. Skull box is back from the original. This room always just had skulls in it. <laughs> just a thing. Box full of skulls. Okay, that's that one. You know what? Since we're here, I'm gonna go ahead and hit up the uh, the healing bed. I left you lying on the floor before, I guess reloading. Shuffled some ragdolls around. Yeah, so far this this version of the demo just has a lot more in it. All these new enemy types. Reshuffling some of the loot. Not bad. As uh, as before, I am very excited to play the full product. How do you feel, Skull? Is this intriguing you at all? I am very interested in the... Uh overall product that we release. I also am very happy with this uh, revitalization of the System Shock brand after they finally recovered the rights from that insurance company that was holding on to them. <laughs> yeah. uh, 
uh, I'm not gonna get into it because I, I don't mm -hmm. I don't know enough off the top of my head to really talk about it but the uh, the IP rights for the System Shock series a uh, long and sordid tale it's it's a real shell game and it's a fun read if you ever have the time I mean, back when System Shock 2 appeared on Steam uh, a couple of years, uh, I guess about a decade ago. No, closer to... I don't remember. But it, it showing up on Steam was like, oh, System Shock 2 is on Steam now. Wild. Because no one could figure out who the hell owned it. For the longest time, if you wanted to play um, Oops, sorry. System if Shock... If you are hearing this, we have set up an operations base to assist in resisting Shodan. Come to Pate at Waterloo, and you will find the medical research vaults have been turned into a radioactive trench. You can bypass this trench via the force bridge that operates off a nearby wiring panel. Any humans that can hear my voice, come to Beta Quadrant and make a stand against Shodan. Oh, there we go. So we've done this a little backwards, but... Hey, sorry, you were saying. <gasps> um... <laughs> So, for the longest time, System Shock was technically Abandonware, and uh, yeah. if you wanted to enjoy System Shock 1 or 2, your only recourse was uh, bays of uh, piratical activity. Yeah, you had to somehow acquire System Shock 1, which obviously, you know, easy enough to, to do if you're used mm -hmm. to doing that sort of thing, but yeah, no official storefront for it whatsoever or maybe you could find it on ebay you know this maybe. highly sought after game that defined yep. a genre i'm sure you can just casually get a complete copy of it on ebay so it's odd the fate of a lot of looking glass studios works was to just get tangled up in a mess of rights holdings and other issues um and yet Oh, here we go. Yeah. Oh, Magpulse cartridges. I wonder... Hmm. I'm sad I did this backwards now, because if these are in the game, that means the Magpulse is probably behind one of those locked doors. Whoops. Ah, well. That's why I didn't blow up the, the thing yet. But yeah, uh, Looking Glass Studios for such a... Uh... A heavy, heavily felt influence on video games uh, as a whole sure did have a lot of trouble getting their products to people who wanted them. Yeah. Oh, a data stick. Wish I had a USB slot on one of my knuckles. So it seems really <laughs> not terribly useful to have it just sticking up like that. Oh, okay, so this is how they're handling the, uh, the various UI elements. Yeah. Medical storage room doors in Delta are locked in cyberspace. Reminder to myself to destroy the cyber core to unlock the doors. By Arnold Hessman. Now, before you jump in, for the benefit of anyone who might not have played System Shock, uh, cyberspace is a very interesting aspect of the original System Shock. It is also an aspect that is almost universally despised. Yeah, I mentioned earlier that you could turn down cyberspace difficulty to one, and it's probably best that you do that. <laughs> cyberspace doesn't really explain to you how it works. It is not intuitive. No, it's not. Well, I'm gonna drop a quick save here just because I don't feel like walking all the way yeah. back, even though we have the thing mm -hmm. but this is new to the this version of the demo so this was mm -hmm. not implemented in the demo previously i'm keen to see how this was uh reinterpreted if at all yeah okay well, already, it's much oh. more readable and understandable. We do have a timer, just like yep. before. <laughs> Pause.
Pulsar Combat V1 software acquired. Now we can shoot. So that is a switch. It unlocks this door. Um, if you've played Descent, this should make some amount of sense. Uh, this is absolutely more readable than Cyberspace in System Shock Original. You kind of flow through this rail shooter section, you have a little bit of control. You have to destroy targets. Um, some of them are more difficult than others, some of them shoot back, others do not. Um, you can frequently find yourself in these little hub rooms. Uh, you want to destroy things. You're looking for specific uh, locks to open, and I see they have made them a little easier to find with these glowing paths. So what we're looking to do is unlock those doors. And we are going to do that uh, by following these paths and hopefully uh, no. getting to both locks before time runs out. And if we do not, uh, we will get kicked out of cyberspace. If we were playing on the highest difficulty, we would die. Yes. So, cyberspace is obviously an abstraction. Uh, the intent is that you are hacking the systems within cyberspace to get the desired result, and you're trying to do it before Shodan finds you and boots you out or fries your brain. Yeah. Um, in the original System Shock, uh, the walls were not um, opaque, and you could actually see it was all wireframe, and you could see everything all at once, and it was very disorienting. Yes, <laughs> it absolutely was. Um, in addition to that, um, because the game doesn't explain to you that you're suddenly going to be playing Descent, it also doesn't do a very good job of communicating to you what is good to bump into and bad to bump into when you're inside. The answer is generally everything is bad to bump into. Don't bump into things. <laughs> you know what? Wasn't there a switch back there? Sorry, what's that? Wasn't there a switch back there? Or am I crazy? Uh, I didn't hear one. Maybe there's... Uh. I mean, we can always go back, and also you're a tad quiet right now. Ah. I mean, this being incredibly loud is not helpful. <laughs> it reset my settings. Ah. Um, and I don't know if I got the audio exactly where it was previously. Um, but this should be... Nope, okay, we did miss a lock. Told ya. I thought so, but I couldn't find the other one. Well, at so least let me, you know what you... <laughs> yeah. Let me... T where's the sound? It's at the bottom. Let me turn the volume down even further. Yeah, there we go. Let's try that again. Uh, yeah, this seems to not be very much affected by the volume slider. <laughs> not dive work on that. Killing these guys they don't actually matter. They're just obstacles. If you run into them, they hurt you. Alright, so... Yeah, original cyberspace was not the most user-friendly experience you could ever ask for. <laughs> I didn't mind it, I ended up not minding it, but it certainly was in need of some polish that it obviously 
didn't have. Uh, it has clearly received as much in the update. Oh yeah, absolutely. Medical. Ah, oh, there we go. Medical armory unlocked. So we just missed this entire room previously. Uh, which was a lot easier to do in the original cyberspace. I do miss the scowling faces, and I know the new enemies kind of have them, but... Yeah. Yeah, but now I believe... I do like this, this effect of it mm. kind of assembling itself from the distance. That's very cool. Also, this soundtrack be bumping. It is quite good. Yeah, but now we can safely leave. And the object again is to escape before Shodan notices your intrusion. Because uh, if she does, she will kill you. If you're playing on that difficulty anyway. If, uh, if we fail, I believe we will just be kicked out minus some health. Oh, which could also happen if we get shot to death. But luckily, we have escaped. The uh, fake dial-up is a nice touch. But then... Very nice. Is it scalpel? Could now you have a lovely commemorative mug. <laughs> yeah. Ah. Uh. Press T to pump up to three rounds into chamber, effective against robots. Like that giant floating robot that was guarding the CPU nodes. <laughs> I kind of like what they're doing with the weapons in this game, where they kind of just making stuff up. Yeah. The Magpulse was easily the best all-around weapon in System Shock 1. Um, and you know what? I'm gonna drop a quick save so I can play around with it a little bit. Okay. Interesting. And then... M much more of a pulse now. Okay. Interesting. I like need it. need to go somewhere, uh, somewhere where you can test how far it'll travel. Yeah. yeah the mag pulse just kind of became your go-to uh, use to kill anything vaguely metallic, just because it is quite good. Let's waste a shot on this guy. Uh, so there we see what I was talking about earlier. Certain damage types not mattering against certain enemies. It's certainly a uh, disorienting effect, though. It is. Uh, this game does have a lot of particle and lighting effects. Damage type magnetic, so it's not going to do anything against any organic enemies. 100% armor penetration, though. So... These intense electromagnetic bursts from this weapon are designed to penetrate metal shielding and damage circuitry. Up to three rounds can be chambered at a time to take down larger targets. Because of its specialization at piercing armor, the mag pulse is recommended against heavily armored robots. Again, like the one that killed us over near the CPU core, but that's fine. Now we can also see I have a bunch of different grenades gas, EMP, and frag. This, uh... This game has a lot of different types of weapons in it. That just means you're more likely to find something you like using.
Yeah, I remember you. So I think... I would say, overall, I'm absolutely a fan of of the remake of you know, both demos. This one's obviously far more fully featured than the first. Not functional. Um, it's a little dark. And I know it's thematically dark, but it's... It's a little dark. <laughs> One of these... Did I... Did I already get the panel that opens? Maybe I did. Well, where haven't we been? Haven't been down here? Oh dear. You can charge up your melee. It's actually not something I'd tried. Ready it. Just like in System Shock 2, actually. Every time I think this is a patch. <laughs> Try Optimum Handbook. Okay, you know what they need to do? They need to change the stethoscope model, right? <gasps> but then keep... A coin! We found a coin! Skelly, this is when my internet died. Uh, to mm -hmm. use the vending machine, you need a coin. Excellent. <laughs> the Vendotron. Let's get an audio um. log. Oh. My, uh, cyberspace thing. I thought it would be replaced, but it seems to be stuck on my screen a little bit. Across the radioactive trench in Beta Quadrant into the operation space that Abe mentioned. Being the highest ranking manager present, I sent Keith and his group to look for supplies. Darcy is working on a plan to disable the mining laser from his office on research. No updates from him yet. We're safe here. But for how long? So there again like, using audio logs really well. That's not anything terribly plot-relevant. It's just cool flavor. Uh, the original vision for the audio logs was to give you the history of a place through people's thoughts and dialogue and that sort of thing. So, you know, yeah, keeping true to that original vision. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, they need to replace the stethoscope model, but then keep the old one and just have a room full of the old model <laughs> somewhere on the <laughs> station. Maybe. So we're heading back into areas we've been previously because I'm... I'm looking, looking for something. I guess we didn't go all the way here? I think that's just the very beginning of the game, though, so we don't really need to go there. Uh, what do you think, Mr. Skelzor? Maybe we should go see if that uh, Gamma Quadrant door is open yet? I think you're going to have to bust those CPU cores, but you could have a look. Probably. I'll just go do it. Glad that guy's still having fun. <laughs> A lot of fun. <laughs> At least we never did come all the way down here. God damn it. 
I don't like these guys. <laughs> I think we managed to avoid that one. Please don't close on me. Oh, shit. Says something. Tipping may cause injury. Don't tip the robot over. Do hit it with a pipe, though. Oh, absolutely hit it with a pipe. That actually would have been the perfect place to try your mag pulse, but... It would have been. Well, look, we can get I'll another little pipe. pipe in case you missed one. This elevator serves me alone. With cameras as my eyes and nodes as, as, as my hands. I rule here, insect. <laughs> So this is the central elevator. Blocked by Shodan security. Oh, Shodan. To all cyborg units, we are very close to sanitizing my station of the hum hum of the human stain. Once the tachyon mining beam is calibrated, we will begin to pu purify the human cities of Earth. My first step towards cleansing the planet and allowing purity. our purity. 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 Our, our purity to flourish is almost complete. Their rotting corpses will provide the food for my my world to grow and prosper. She has a very clear idea of what she wants to have happen. Is this just a lever for the door? Okay. I don't actually think... Because um, this... This demo is just the medical level. I don't mm -hmm. believe you can uh, do anything as far as disabling the mining laser. I think that's on another floor. You gotta go to um, engineering, don't you? I believe so. So, it'd probably do a little more if he was a full robot, but it is useful against cyborgs. That was a mug, not a soda. You know what? Oh, this one is Optimum Green. I don't think we saw that one when we looked before. Let's, let's drink some sodas. Delightful. I appreciate it leaving you with uh, crunched up cans to toss. Yeah. Usually you want the opposite of this to happen if you're on a medical bed. <laughs> no, you don't know. I guess I don't. I mean, I've, I've been in a hospital a couple times, here and there. <laughs> Hold on. Why would I do that? There we go. So, I guess we're coming to the end of, like, things I can do outside of <laughs> uh, the, the actual objective. So, as we come up on what I imagine will be the closing thoughts, uh, I'm very impressed by what Night Dive is doing, has done, and I cannot wait for the full game to come out. It is 
It might be a little weird that it is just kind of a one-to-one -one remake, and it's like, why don't you just play the original? I, you know what? Sometimes it's okay. The, this is an old game that only recently had... You know, it's, it's time to come back into the world. And... Maybe sometimes it's okay to just give it a fresh coat of paint and show people... Well... Even now, there are people, like I say, even now, there are plenty of people that would be turned off by the look of the original, right? Because oh, it yeah, is very sure. primitive in its construction, graphically. It absolutely isn't. That's even with the uh, the advent of mouse look and proper resolution support. Like, it, it is just an old game. And if... If this is just a fully 3D remake with a couple extra features here and there, it's gonna... If it excites the right people, right? Yeah, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm definitely gonna replay the game because of this. Yeah, uh, it has a store page on Steam. It's 45 American dollars. So they're not even asking, like, a full release price. And I feel that they could, and I would still pay for it. But, um, yeah, I, I'm impressed. Night Dive, good job. Excellent job. And anybody who's interested, keep an eye out. Play the demo for yourself if you want to. There's a lot to like about this game, and I think it's going to translate very well into the modern age. That bounced. <laughs> that bounced a lot. Okay. <laughs> These bounce quite a bit. Gotcha. They seem really dangerous for grenades, to be perfectly honest. Yeah. Ow. Hey, look, another <laughs> mini pistol. This one has ammo in it, so what we do is empty it and then drop it. That was a very accurate and precise drop. <laughs> it was, I was a little surprised. Uh, these things. If you are playing this for the first time, pay attention to these things. You'll thank me. Pay attention. Who are you? The computer nodes can be repaired, but you... Who are, are you? you? My, my... my cameras and sensors scan your body. But you do not... But you do not, but, but you do not match any employee file. When my... Cyborgs bring you to an electrified interrogation bench. I will have your secrets. And, and, and you will learn more about pain than you ever wanted to know. I love the idea of um, this... AI super intelligence resorting to very mundane methods of information gathering. <laughs> I don't well. know who you are, so I'm going to electrify you until you tell me. <laughs> I might serve some other purposes. So... Obviously we... might have made a... small little oopsie with getting there and then wandering the other way, but, uh... Oh, hey, Rebecca. Packer, Rebecca here. It says here that you're listed as employee 2-4601. Diego provided that cover to you, and the neural implant. In exchange for what? The keys to Shodan. Not hard to put two and two together regarding the current state of the station. 
Try op authorized to deal. Help get the station back under control, and you get a clean slate. But looks like we're partners now, and if we play this right, we can work out what Diego wants. I prefer a quiet station. station. Thank you. Thank you. No talking in the library, hacker. They changed the line. Mm. So, the idea that Shodan is always listening is incredible. And I, I, I spoke about the way she's written in the game to always have something going on. And I, I love that. I really do. Uh, I'm going to head back over to that marker. Um, so, you know, Rebecca Lansing is, you know, trying to, to get in contact with you and tell you what to do next, and Shodan just cuts her off and is like, no, no, you're not allowed, not allowed to talk. No. I love that. <laughs> um, they did change the line, however. In the original game, it's just a very quick, sinister, I prefer quiet on my station. And they made it a little longer. Well, they also had her sarcastically thank you. But I guess they're trying to make her more in line with System Shock 2's Shodan, who's yeah. kind of sassy. Okay, so, if we picked up a coin. Please make your selection. It recommended a red drink to us. Let's let's do that then. Don't be a stranger. Truly video game technology has peaked. <laughs> Delightful. Mm. Gonna run. So you always have a mini map. I don't, um. In the original game, you could change the zoom level of your mini map, and I don't know if there's a way to do that here. Uh, I can't, I'm pressing buttons, I can't find it. I hope that they do add that. I don't know, it would be nice. <laughs> So I'm going to try, because we're at, what is that, 6%? 8% deck security. So, I don't know if that'll be enough. But ideally, you want to get to zero. But sometimes you don't need entirely zero. Ah, but this time we do. the radioactive trench. So, where do you think the last security camera, last couple security cameras are? Ah, uh, the classic system shock experience, looking for the last goddamn security cameras. <laughs> At least they're far more discernible now. Yeah. Make noise. I guess that's why they, they added lights. the noise, yeah. Like, obviously, it's in line with System Shock 2, but the the noise also makes them more immediately locatable. Mm -hmm. um, if anyone from Night Dive Studios watches this, I would recommend that you add a breadcrumb, uh, breadcrumb trail to the player's icon on the map. That would be nice. Show mm -hmm. me my past steps within the last, like, couple hundred feet. Yeah. Because uh, backtracking is a big thing, and knowing where you've already searched is important in System Shock. Yeah. <laughs> We're ready to go to the next area and end the demo, but I want to see what's behind that door. Could be anything. Could even be another door. Yeah, yeah. I love you, Snacktron. I guess we uh, we never went up here. Preparing. Broken beyond repair. So sad. 
look, it's uh, Grossman. Ah, there we go. Four percent. We got one more camera to find. Man, I gotta say, once again, I love, love that they kept the original color palette. So much of it. I think the lighting really helps it, all the little bits of color that splash through, and it's just, it's good. It manages to be, um, busy without being noisy. You don't know what this does. There we go. Nothing usual. I think this one. Hey. V mail. Cool. <laughs> Shields offline. Eco pods, three remaining. Life pods disabled. Those are all important stats. And it's very <laughs> cool that they have included them. Yeah. Nathan to Arcee. For later, when the game comes out. But also we see uh, another spark beam here. So there's definitely more chances to, to get the spark beam. <laughs> Which is good. Than there, uh, there were in the first demo. Well. And this is, this is what's going on. Like, all these little side areas do a lot for you. And they're all missable. But that one's telling us uh, how to deal with the laser. One more camera. So there is a security on the map it would automatically get added, but I imagine we just haven't quite gotten there yet. Maybe it's up here, near Alpha. Oh, right, it was the radioactive hell area. <laughs> well, in the interest of finding security, let's see if we can find any security. We're fine. No security in here. Well, let's uh, just quick save here so we don't have to run back all the way and uh, we'll see what happens. See if we can find a camera of any kind. We're doing okay. So far. No camera. It looks like we've maxed out on radiation poisoning. It's fine. Look, some soda? <laughs> I'm sure that's not highly radioactive. Of course not. You think Snacktron would would dare 
sell something that could be radiated. I gotta say, the Geiger counter effect is a welcome change over the original radiation noise. <laughs> it really is. It doesn't seem like the camera was down that way. <laughs> I suppose we never came this way. Which is wild, because the first time I played this, I did. And we have a lovely little observation deck here. Look at this, it's so nice. Back in the first demo, when I came here, uh, there were three mutants waiting to murder me. And they did. Just, just standing around in the hallway. Yeah, they were just looking at the scenery. It is a weird observation area, though, right? Because, like, both areas, but both ways to get to it require you to climb around, like, weird back way pipes. <laughs> Maybe some of this paneling is another easier way in that just doesn't work. Yeah, that's possible. Hello. Yeah, uh... Big levels. <laughs> oh boy, what do we think this is? Oh, okay. There's a certain... look, th there's a certain button that I don't know if it's on this deck, I forget. No, it's on engineering. So many little places to go. They say biological contamination, but they never specify exactly what it is that's killing you. Uh, it's just really smelly. <laughs> like, awful. Standard rounds. I'm not complaining. I, I fully support the decision to, you know, save some cool weapon surprises for later. System Shock 1 also has, like, a million different weapons in it. Um, but I am surprised they haven't at least given us a couple different types of bullets to use. I believe that's actually gonna be. Oh, missed the door. Never mind. <laughs> Ask me what it's like being so good at video games. Oh, but but you're a you're a whiz at video games. Just look at how easily you defeated Dark Souls Three. Oh, hi. I mean, it's true. I did defeat Dark Souls Three very easily. Here, I even remembered that I had the magpuls. Walked right past it. Nothing on it. Excellent. Do 
20 bullets and berserk combat booster. Yeah, this is a door we saw earlier. I didn't point it out, but it's a little wall glass door in it we can't open. Oh, come on. There we go. Get up there. I bet there's something really cool. If only we could uh, clamber or something. No, else. looking looking glass wouldn't introduce clambering until uh, thief. That's true. All right, now I think that's the entire level. And like, look at this. This is the first level of the game. This station has many other levels. And this is the demo. So, God, remember demos? I remember, I remember demos. demos. I'm glad Night Dive remembers demos, given the... given the games they interact with. So... Let us head back to... Here, and then we'll take the elevator and end the demo. Not that way. Let's stamina up. Take some... some straight adrenaline, I guess. Oh, hello. Enemies do respawn. It's not a huge problem. Uh, again, because it's less of an RPG than System Shock 2, well, not at all an RPG, uh, there's nothing you have to worry about, like weapons degrading or anything like that, so respawning enemies are just... generally they're fine. Um, again, not trying to talk too much about System Shock 2 right away. They are one of the things I actually don't like very much about System Shock 2. But... Uh, in System Shock 1, I find the, the inclusion of it perfectly tolerable. It helps that there's enough ammunition on the station to kill the entire population of Earth. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, still, again, we're just finding little corners. And it's great. There, getting two med patches? Not bad. So what do you think is going to be behind the door, Skull? To the elevator? Oh, behind the secret Shodan security door. Oh, a Cortex Reaver. That would be hilarious. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Just in case you're right. Okay, it was not a Cortex Reaver. Oh, it was a Magnum. Nice. Heavy slug rounds. So, oh, excellent. Here, we can also see, in addition to different ammo types, certain ammo can be shared between weapons. So this is a Magnum that fires rifle rounds. It says there it's used by Magnum 2100 pistol and the Mark III assault rifle. That sounds like the least safe thing to have on a space station ever. I'm sure it's fine. What do I do? There we go. 
Is there anything even left to use it on? No, there isn't. <laughs> but you know what? Once this is the the full release, there will be, because you'll uh, you'll want to have this going to the next deck. <laughs> EMP grenades. Alright. So this room is basically a reward, uh, reward for remembering to come back and check it, because the next area in the game is um, quite harsh if you don't have this kind of equipment. Yeah, it can, it can definitely be rough. Alright, well... I'm just going to go ahead and crossfade ourselves over to the elevator and uh, say our goodbyes there. Alright, and we're back at uh, the elevator. So, this has been the medical deck demo of System Shock <laughs> Remake. Took us a while, but <laughs> uh, that's, you know what, that's just a testament to how much stuff there is and how much there's going to be. And if you liked what you saw, absolutely add this game to your wish list. Tell Night Dive that they're doing a good job, because they Night are. Night Dive are killing it. They are absolutely killing it. Uh, and if you want, if you don't want to wait for it to come out in currently projected summer of 2021, which is you know this year, uh, buy the enhanced edition, also by Night Dive of System Shock One <laughs> Original and play it. So, uh... Let's, you know what, let's, let's hear what the, the Magnum is like. Even though... I was hoping you'd, yeah. Even though we don't have anything left to use it on. You shoot that medical waste, I suppose. <laughs> now this. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Oh, that's not... I turned down nearly... all the yeah. sound effects because of cyberspace. It's not quite as punchy as I'd hoped, though, to be perfectly honest with you. I keep ticking show subtitles. Well, that's... You know what? That's a, I take it back. That's actually pretty good. Oh, that's pretty good indeed. Ricochet? Yeah. Or it looks like there's a, a visual effect for it at least. Well, maybe it did. Maybe it's just the oh, particles. It's, yeah, it's leaving behind a smoke trail. Doesn't seem like there's a uh, difference in sound between loading rounds for the Magpul, sadly. Alright. And one last little little lovely surprise. Ah, oh, I've missed it.